Hello everybody. So today I have a video for configuring bind DNS on a Red Hat 7 server. I'm currently using version 7.6, but this should also work for the previous uh, 7 builds. And this should also work for CentOS 7 as well. So um, I actually already have bind configured and working on this server. I'm redoing this video because I received some complaints about the font size and the uh, terminal coloring, despite the fact that I had a full how to uh, file in the description of this video. Uh, the same file will be in the description of this video as well. So you can either just download that and go over it at your own time or follow along with this. So hopefully this helps. Um, I'll go over each step in the file. So before we configure DNS or go over the DNS configuration, uh, you'll want to make sure you have a static IP. So the first thing you'll want to do is get the network adapter name um, that you are going to be modifying the IP address for. So you can do if config dash a and this is the adapter that I will be modifying. So once you have the name and its current IP address you can uh, modify the system file for that adapter. So to do that you can use vi and we will be going to etc sysconfig network scripts and then ifcfg and then you'll take the adapter name and just paste it there or type it out if you can't paste um, and then open it. Open that file and you should have something like this. So this adapter got set up when I installed Red Hat um, so a lot of these settings are here by default. I believe boot protocol might say DHCP if it does change it to none or static make sure on boot is set to yes. And then for the IP address, uh, this is what you're going to actually be changing to set your static IP. So as you can see, I'm going to be using 192.168.0.101. Make sure you use something that um, is resolvable or reachable on your network. And um, the prefix is the subnet mask. So it's uh, for me, 255.255.255.0. Um, I think you can put instead of prefix subnet equals and then the full value or you can do like I've done here and use the prefix. Uh, the gateway is the gateway for the network. Obviously you'll need to change that so it's the gateway of your network. And then for DNS1 I've actually used um, the static IP address that we're setting on this server because it's going to be our DNS server. The other two here are just uh, public DNS servers for when I reach out to the internet. So once you've done making those changes you can hit escape colon wq exclamation mark and that's how you can save and close the file so once that's done uh, you can check to see if your firewall is running by running service firewall d status so you can see mine is running um, if yours is not running you can enable it if you want or just skip this step. Basically what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can set a firewall rule on the public zone for DNS queries. So to do that you can run firewall dash cmd dash dash permanent dash dash zone equals public dash dash add service equals DNS. And I already have it, so it's going to complain. As you can see it's already enabled. Um, otherwise, it'll just say success. And then if you want, uh, you can reload the firewall as well with the following command. So once that's done, you'll want to install bind and bind-utils. And you can do that by running yum space dash y install bind star and that'll install both. I already have them installed so it's going to say uh, no action or nothing to do uh, but otherwise it should go through and install both packages for you. Uh, so now that bind is installed we'll have a named.conf file under the etc directory so we're going to open that with vi as well and the first two changes will be to comment out these two lines. They will not be commented out by default. And um, that basically just allows it so uh, 
it enables bind to listen to you all, on all IP addresses. And the next thing we'll change is down here where it says allow query. After the semicolon, add the network address for your network followed by forward slash and then the subnet prefix and then another semicolon. It's very important when you're modifying the files for DNS that uh, you have all of your semicolons and brackets closed correctly. Otherwise, the service will not start. It will generally tell you why the service didn't start, but just to uh, rule out any difficulties, make sure that you have your semicolons and brackets um, there. So uh, the next thing will be at the end of the file. Uh, I've added these two entries here. They are not there by default. And what these are, they're entries for the forward and reverse lookup zones. So as you can see, uh, my domain is going to be called kjl.local. And uh, it's pointing to the file that we'll be creating for the forward lookup zone, which is under the var slash named directory. Um, again, you can basically copy and paste these entries into yours. Just make sure that you change the domain values here for your domain. And then for this one, uh, the reverse lookup zone is basically, it's the first three octets of your network address. So for me, that's 192.168.0. You flip them in reverse, and then you have dash in dash ADDR dot, dot ARPA. Um, and then the same thing here for the reverse file. It's the first three octets of your network address in reverse. Again, make sure uh, you have all of your semicolons in the correct spots and uh, that you've closed any curly bracket, opening curly bracket. So once you have something like this, but for your domain and your network, you can hit escape WQ exclamation mark. And the next thing you'll be doing is configuring the uh, zone files. So as I said, they're under uh, var named. As you can see, they're not here by default. You actually have to make them. So I have already made my forward and reverse lookup files. So I'll open the forward lookup file first. And again, since you're making the file, it's completely empty. You can copy this right here and paste it directly into your file. The only thing you'll need to change is obviously change this with the fully qualified domain name of your DNS server that you're making. And then um, also put root dot and then your domain. And then make sure when you're ending like these host names and this line here, uh, always put a period at the end and uh, that's pretty much it so again you can copy this exactly just make sure to change these two entries here to reflect uh, your environment and then down here you can do at tab in tab ns and then the fully qualified domain name of your dns server again ending it with a period on uh, the next few lines are the actual entries for your dns or your domain so as you can see, I have a few hosts here. Um, again, periods on the end. I, N, A, make sure to use tabs, and then the IP address um, for each host. So you should have something like this um, for the IP addresses for the host names in your environment. And then once you've got that, you can do the escape colon WQ exclamation mark. And then the same thing, you'll need to create a file for your reverse lookup zone. So again, var named, and then the file that we specified in the name.conf. And like the forward lookup zone, you can copy this exactly, just making sure to make changes here for your domain and the root dot eat your domain. Um, down here, you'll want to do at tab in tab ns, and then the fully qualified domain name of your DNS server. And then if you remember, the file is the first three octets of your uh, network address, but in reverse. The entries are the 
specific values tied to each host, so which would be the fourth octet. They should be unique to each host. There shouldn't be any duplicates. Um, as you can see, I have the rest of those hosts here. Uh, you'll want to do the same thing. Again, make sure that you have your periods on the end. Once you're done doing that, you can do colon or escape colon WQ exclamation mark. And then uh, provided everything was done correctly, you should be able to restart uh, named dot service. So if um, it does report an error, you can do system CTL status named dot service. And generally, it'll have like a few lines down here that could say like unexpected end of line, uh, missing semicolon on this line. So just go back into the files and uh, correct any mistakes that have been made. And then uh, you can attempt to restart the service again. Uh, once the service comes up, when it starts, as you can see, the last time I ran it, it reported nothing. It, it just came up successfully. So once it does that, you can enable the service, which should cause it to come up on automatically if you reboot this host or your host. Uh, generally, what you'll see is uh, like it's it'll create a link um, so that it comes up during the boot. And um, once you've done all that, you should be able to run queries against the domain server. So I'm going to use dig um, and just specify the server itself. And you should get a response that basically shows uh, both the forward and I guess it doesn't show the reverse, but it does show um, that it it's pulling the correct fully qualified domain name, the domain itself, the IP address associated with it. Um, then what I would recommend doing would be use NS lookup. So and I'm actually going to pick a different host other than the DNS server. So as you can see, this pulled up the vCenter entry. And you should also be able to do short names. All right, so there you go. Uh, you can, as you can see, DNS is fully working. I was able to query forward, or at least get a response from dig, and then do reverse and short name lookups. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.